Uh, if you have your Bibles, open them to uh, Matthew chapter number 21. <clears throat> Our desire this year, you know, everybody does New Year's resolutions, but uh, my desire this year, and I think the where God is leading us is that uh, our desire is that this year we want to draw close to the Lord. We want to get as close as we can to God. And by the way, that should be a lifetime pursuit, should it not? And, and it's something that we learn that we need to do and we need to begin today. Amen. And we need to repeat it tomorrow. Amen. And we need to understand that we uh, have come to this place where let's fall in love with the process what it means to draw closer to God. Let's, let's, it's like the farmer. Farmers work hard, but they don't take days off. They work every day. Now, the, the, the crop comes later on, but you've got to get ready, and you've got to do those things every day that you're supposed to do so that you can be, so that you can receive uh, the crop during the, during the season. And I believe that this could be a, a great time for us. We have, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, you have eternal life. Our God is up there in eternity looking down on us, and he loves us so very much. But we're here in time. So in time, we're going to walk this pursuit of God out every day and seek to draw closer until we can step out of time and step into uh, eternity and be with him. I mean, really, how, how special we should feel that the God of the universe wants to spend time with us. We should be flattered to know that he knows us by name and that God cares. He cares about us so very much. And he, he, uh, we, we need to recognize him in our life. And, and we, wanna, we must choose today to spend time with him. I mean, you're, you chose to get up to come to church today or to tune us in to watch us online. You chose to do that. And we need to choose to... to uh, learn more about him in our, in our Bibles every day. So we've been talking about having a, a time with God, a quiet time with God. We've been talking about getting up every day and spending time with him. And I've shared some of the things that, uh, from people that I've learned from. Charles Stanley says that he doesn't want his feet to touch the floor before he uh, asks God to be close to him, and he'll put on the armor of God before he ever gets out of bed. He'll pray through the armor of God because he says he can't face the challenges of the day without the protection and the strength and the love of God. W.A. Criswell, the great pastor of First Baptist Dallas, said he begins every day with God and he wants to do that before he does anything else in his day. So we, we begin our day intentionally with God. If you don't do it intentionally, you're not going to do it. If you're just waiting to be reminded of it, it'll be somewhere later on in the day and you'll say, hey, I forgot to spend my time with God. We need to do it intentionally. We need to, we need to set aside some time with God every day. Now, last Sunday I talked about Henry Blackaby and how he would get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and, and, and it, just to spend time with God. And I thought afterwards, I thought, I wonder if the people thought I was expecting everybody to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and, and spend three or four or five hours with God. I don't, I don't care where you begin, but I'm just saying prioritize our Lord because he prioritizes you. Love him with all your heart. And if you love him, spend time with him. Open your ears up. I love the parts of Scripture where it says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So let's, let's pray that right now, that we can have a two-way conversation. My, my hope this morning, my prayer this morning, is that while you're listening to my voice, you'll hear his voice. And while we hear his word, you'll hear a word directly from him. And our minds and our hearts can be one. And the things that we say that we want and we desire, let's have the opportunity to meet with the Holy One of Heaven. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, even right now. Father, thank you for the moment that we have. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the blessing of your word. 
Thank you for the gift of prayer. That you, my God, want to spend time with me. Lord, that you want to hear what I have to say. Lord, I definitely desire to hear what you have to say. Make us one. Lord, I know our minds are so vast and so amazing. And Lord, it's, we're so prone to wander and drift. But Lord, I pray that in the next few moments that you'll give us ears to hear you. Speak to us by name. Draw us close. May your will be our will. And Lord, we'll bless you and we'll thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have your Bibles, <clears throat> open it to Matthew chapter number 21. In Matthew 21, we hear a, here is a story where Jesus was in his last week on earth. The cross was less than a week away. And every week, he would uh, stay outside of Jerusalem. Most of the time, he stayed in the city of Bethany. And he would walk in in the morning, and he would go to Jerusalem. He would go to the temple, and he would spend time with the people there, and he would minister to them there. And one day that he was walking in, he came up to a fig tree that was on the side of the road, and he was hungry. Now, the, the trees and the, the crops that were on the side of the road, it was common in their day that travelers were allowed to go and to, to eat of the fruit of the trees that were there. They, they would be common for everyone, so it was uh, okay for them to eat. So he's hungry, and he's walking in, and he sees this fig tree, and it's full of leaves, and the blooms are there, and, and he's hungry, and he says, I believe I'll go over and, and get some, some fruit. But when he goes to the fruit tree, what does he find? Nothing. Nothing. Now, let's just be honest. What's the purpose of a fig tree? To produce fruit, figs. And, and this tree looked exactly, it was the right season. It, it, it was leaved out, the blooms were there. Everything looked like it was a, a healthy, fruitful tree. But when he went to the tree, he found no fruit on it, get this now, and he cursed it. This is the way I look at it. It was a hypocrite tree. It looked like it was the real deal, but it wasn't. It looked like it was fruit bearing, but it wasn't. You know, a hypocrite is one who puts on a false front. They look one way, but they're really different. And this tree, I mean, Jesus went to it because all the evidence said that it was a fruit bearing tree. But when he found it, he found no fruit on it. So at that point in time, he said, he cursed it and said, may no fruit ever be on you again. By the way, that's a sermon for another day. But may that never be what he says of us when he looks at us. You say you're one thing, but you're not. You say that you want to produce fruit for God, but the actions of your life say something very different. I don't want to be a part of God's cursing. Amen? I want to be a part of God's blessings. Well, the next day, they went by that, that day, he cursed the tree. They went into Jerusalem that day, and he did what he was going to do. As a matter of fact, it's a very interesting point. That was the day that he went into Jerusalem, found the money changers uh, really stealing money from people, and he started kicking over tables, and he started opening up the, for the animals to get loose. That was that very day. He confronted that day a barren tree, and he confronted people with barren hearts. What a day. What a day. So he left the, the Jerusalem and he went back out to Bethany. And the next day when he was walking in, as he was walking down the road, when they came to that fig tree, the disciples noticed that the fig tree was withered up, dead, and gone. Hear what God's word says in Matthew 21, verse number 20. You there? Say Amen. Look what God's word says. And when the disciples saw it, that is the tree, they marveled saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? Now the day before they heard the man who could take bread and fish and feed thousands. They heard 
the words of the man who could say to the leper, be cleansed, to the blind, to give them sight, to the lame, rise and walk. They had seen the power of God in this man, but it was almost as if when Jesus said that, they heard it, they took note, but this time, that when they saw the tree that it was withered away, they marveled because it was done exactly the way Jesus said. And it, and it happened quickly. How did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly I say to you, if you have faith, let the Spirit speak to us now, and not doubt, you will not only do what was done to this fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. Now, if the preacher comes to you today and says, it really doesn't matter what mountain you have in your life. It really doesn't matter what obstacle you have in your life. It really doesn't matter how big of a, a, an impossibility it is. If you believe and you pray, it will be done. In this building, under my voice, you would say, yes, it is true. That's right. Preach on, preacher. Preach on. But do you really honestly believe that when we pray, every obstacle any obstacle can be removed. Let me say this again. This is the word of God. He says, assuredly, the old King James said, verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, if you have faith, that's faith in God, and do not doubt, that's belief, you will not only do what was done to this fig tree, that means you can do what was done to this fig tree. But you can say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. It will be done. Hear this. Whatever things you ask in prayer, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Now, right now, there's a work that's being done. Right now, in the hearts of everyone that's listening, you've heard what I've said, not Brian's words, the word of God. And right now, in your heart, part of you saying, I want to believe that. I'm supposed to believe that. Part of you may be even urging in yourself, Lord, help me to believe that. But right now, you're, you're gonna qu the qualifier is going to come. Do you believe it or not? Can God do that or not? Now, hold on. If you say, I believe God can, I just don't know that he'll do it for me. Well, what makes you so special that God would treat you differently than others? When God says all, that's all God means. I had a person say to me, I, I really believe that God saved you, preacher. I just don't think that God would save me. If salvation is available, it's available to anyone. The promises of God are real and right and true. And he's not saying, hey, I'll, I'll give it to you, but I'm not going to give it to you. Right? Daniel, you'll get it. Mark, I don't know. We'll think about it. No! No! If it's the word of God for the people of God, then we need to trust God at his word. Listen, is this the word of God? Is it right? Is it true? Can you believe it? Can you trust it? Are you going to believe it? It's there for you. He says, let me say it to you again. He says, whatever things you ask in prayer, Believing, you will receive. You will receive. Bold prayers honor God. And God honors bold prayers. Prayers, people who pray. God isn't offended by your biggest prayers and your biggest dreams. 
He's not offended by that, your boldest prayers. He's offended by anything less. God wants you to come to him and say, I believe you, God, and I believe all things are possible. God keeps his promises. God answers prayers. God performs miracles every day. God fulfills dreams, the dreams that he puts on the hearts of his people in his mind. Y'all listening to the preacher? God is for you. He's the best cheerleader you got. He loves you with an everlasting love. God is looking for people that will trust in him that he can bless. Prayers are really prophecies. Things that are put out there that have not yet been fulfilled, but we believe that in the hands of God, God can do all things. Prayers hold their, your spiritual future. I wrote this down. I want you to hear this. Who you become is determined by how you pray. And the transcripts of your prayers is the script of your life. God will meet you there. Take your Bible and flip over to the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 9. Right now it's happening. I know I'm supposed to believe this, but can I just say I want all those doubts to go away. I want us to, to listen to God with fresh ears to hear. I want us to commune and be open to the possibilities of, of the things that you dream, that you pray, that you believe, that God is able to meet you there. God is able to meet you there. In Mark chapter 9, he had gathered with his disciples and he had taken them up on a mountain. And, and as he was there on top of the mountain, he, uh, he told them, he says, we're going to pray. This is an absolutely amazing thing. Listen now. When, when Jesus left heaven, Philippians 2 says he took off the robes of glory and he laid them down. The very essence of God, nobody could look at God. So he had to take that, that, that glory and, and hide it under the human flesh, so to speak. And he came and he emptied himself so that he could live a human life like us. But this day when he went but up on the mountain and he prayed to the Father, something amazing happened. His life and the power of God meshed in one and it was like he took those robes of glory and he put them back on because when he was there on the mountain, he was there, the Bible uses this word, he was transfigured. The glory of God was now shining freshly upon him like it had through all of eternity past. And he was one with God, always. And the disciples, Peter, James, and John, woke up. They looked over and they saw that. and They didn't have words to, to describe it. And old Peter, he didn't know what to say, but he said something anyway, right? He said, oh, let's do this. And then God spoke through the cloud and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Then he used these two words. Listen to him, those three words. Listen to him. Listen. And the disciples are listening to that. And they're seeing Jesus. And they just heard from God. Could you, you know, if that had been me, I mean, the, the, the goosebumps would have been going, they'd been growing on top of goosebumps, on top of goosebumps. I would have been so excited, and they were. And, and they were asking questions, and they, they were just so enthralled by it. What a wonderful time when we meet with God and God meets with us, and, and we can just, we're just so excited. By the way, that can happen every time, every day in prayer. When God meets us there. Well, they came down the mountain, and as soon as they got down the mountain, they found a fight going on. 
Jesus' disciples that he left behind were fighting with the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. A man had come to find Jesus and he had a son that had a, it was possessed by a demon. And he had asked that his, this demon would be cast out of his sons. And, and the disciples tried, but they couldn't. So Jesus said, why are you fussing with my disciples? They man stood, stood up and said, I, I, this is the reason why. Jesus began to talk to him. Now I want you to hear the end of it. And then we'll talk about the beginning of it. Look, let's, let's hear the, the end of it first. Verse 25. Mark chapter 9, verse 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit and said to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him as if it had a choice. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Jesus spoke. The power of the Holy Spirit took those words, made them come alive. And that demon was told to leave, and he had no choice, and he left him. And that father now had a child. He could look into his child's eyes and see that clear, no tormented eyes anymore. But I want you to hear what happened before that. Back up and let's begin in verse number 21. So Jesus asked the father, how long has this happened to him? The father said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him into the, both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Look what he's saying there. If you can do anything. He's saying this to Jesus. Jesus, can you do anything? I, I brought him here because I heard about you. I heard that you've done great and mighty things with others. But, but Lord, if you can do anything for my boy, would you have compassion? Could you help us out? Can you hear the urgency of the Father in his prayer? Listen to Jesus' reply. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Can you believe? I mean, can you? It's very easy to do. But for you to believe, you've got to get beyond you. Because when we look at something, we look at it through what we think, what we have seen, what we have experienced. But when we come to the end of ourself, that's when we find the Almighty God. And that's when we look beyond what we can do to what God can do. Prayer is when we look beyond what we can do and we find the power of what God can do. If we could do it, we wouldn't need to pray. But we come to him and say, Lord, can you, can you do this? Would you do this? And God would look at us and say, if you can believe all things, and all means all, and that's all all means, all things, anything, everything, all things are possible. Can we just put a period there? I don't care what your prayer request is. I don't care what your need is. All things are possible. I don't care what your impossibility is. All things are possible. Can you tell me anything that God can't do? When it comes to his love, is there anything God won't do? To him who believes. Here's what I want you to hear. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. But then he was honest. He said, help my unbelief. 
How many of you, if I told you that God can do all things and God's willing to do anything in your life, how many of you would just, in your spirit right now, you'd say, I know God does that, would do that. Yeah, I believe that. But then, if we talked, every one of you are facing a problem. Every one of you are facing a, an issue that's bigger than you. So let me just ask you, are you willing to believe him now? Are you willing to trust him now? Are you, do you, are you willing to say that God can do anything? All things are possible, if you'll believe. So maybe you need to come and say, Lord, as best I can right now, I believe. Help my unbelief, Lord. Help me. Prayer's not a magic trick. God's not a genie in a bottle. Your wish is not his command. But his will, his wants, they need to be our wish. And literally, if our heart can blend with God's heart, God can do some great and mighty things. So what God wants, God wills. And when his will becomes your will, when God's will becomes the desire of your heart, you just found the power source to do anything. This is a very practical thing. If you don't believe God, then why pray? But if you do believe God, you must pray. It's a matter of the God that you pray to. We have not because we ask not. Because we believe not. Because we trust not, and because we do not. So let me talk about our prayer life. How many of you, when you pray, they all kind of sound the same? Well, that's because we're human. How many of y'all have habits in your life? I guarantee y'all, all y'all that brushed your teeth this morning, you brushed in the same way yesterday and the day before. Amen? I said it in the first service. My wife was here in the first service. Used to be that we could go to any restaurant and I could order for her because no matter the restaurant, I knew she was going to eat the same thing every time. She had that little thing about her where she said, well, I've had that and it's good and I know I like it, so I'll just get it again. Now, I about broke her from that. Matter of fact, we went out to, week this, we went out to eat this week on, on date night, and, and we went to a restaurant. She said, this is what she said, I normally get this, but I'm going to try something new. And, and for those of you, Mark, she, you heard her say it. I said, I, I, I said, and you liked it, didn't she? She said, yeah, it was good. But that's what we normally do. And when we pray, we fall back into a, a normal pattern and we pray the same thing. How many of you, before you pray over a meal, the, the prayer over a meal kind of sounds the same? And if you're going to spend some time with God, you'll, you'll kind of say the same things. My grandfather was born in 1875. I'm looking forward to uh, meeting him. Amen? He would be 146 years old if he were alive today. But, but when they said that when he prayed, he had a paragraph, and he would recite that same prayer every day prayer he would recite the same words but after he got beyond that paragraph he began praying and a lot of us if we're going to say well I'm going to pray more and, and we'll go to and we'll begin praying and when we begin pray we say the same thing we said yesterday that's because we're human when, when an impulse comes to us and it goes to our mind it goes to the, to the amygdala and the amygdala sends it to the place in the mind there it, it's called having a neural pathway and if you normally go this way, it'll take you that same way. So to break that habit or to break free from the chains that you've placed upon your prayer life, you're going to have to do some things a little different. So if you want to have a more fruitful prayer life, I'm going to give you some suggestions that I want you to try. And maybe you can have more than a three-minute boring prayer. Y'all ready? Once again, I'm going to say this. 
You're going, in your mind right now, you'll say, well, I'll let, I'm going to listen to him, but I'm not too sure I'm going to do it. Be open. All right? Let me give you some patterns for prayer, and I want you to start there and try this. Number one, have you ever heard of the book of Acts, A-C-T-S, Acts of the Apostles? Well, take that word Acts and think about this. A stands for adoration. So when you begin praying, you start adoring God. You start giving God adoration for all the things that your mind can think about. You start giving him praise for that. C, confess. Now, y'all can spend a lot of time there. I do. You know what? This dirty, rotten sinner that I am, I end up having sometimes to confess this, the same things today that I had to confess yesterday because I keep doing them. But whatever, listen to me now, if you meet the Holy Spirit in prayer, sometimes the Holy Spirit will be impressing upon your heart what to pray. So when you come to the point of confession, there may be some things that you haven't even thought about, but the Lord will put his finger right there in your heart, and you need to confess it to him. T, thanksgiving. Give him thanksgiving for all the things that God's done in your heart and life. Is there anything you can thank God for? And S stands for supplication. Sometimes we'll begin our prayer and we'll say, Lord, I love you. Thank you for all the things that you're going to do in, a, uh, in, in my day. And Lord, I pray for Bradley. I pray for Gibson. I pray for Kirby. Kirby's going to be out walking, working today and dogs are going to be chasing him all day long. Pray, Lord, he doesn't get bit too hard, whatever, something like that. And we move straight to praying for others. Hold on. We just skipped adoring God. Adoration. I think prayer is our mind and our heart coming together and melting with the heart of God. If all you're doing is praying with your mind, you're reciting facts. But God wants to hear from the, the essence of who we truly are. So give him adoration. Make confession. Right? Give him thanksgiving and then pray for others. How many of you can think of the word pray? P-R-A-Y. Amen? P, praise him. Praise him. R, repent. A, ask God for whatever's on your heart. Whatever that you're, you're saying that this is the impossibility, God, that I'm bringing to you. And I love this one because when I get to Y, it stands for yield. And that's really where I need to make sure that I spend some time. Because I want to make sure that there's nothing in my life that I haven't yielded to him. If he's the Lord of my life, I want him to be the Lord of all my life. So P-R-A-Y, praise, repent, ask, yield. It's a model. It's just something to help you out. By the way, pray as long over each and every one of those as you want to. The disciples came together one time and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Could you imagine them hearing Jesus pray? Whew. Man, I would, I'd give anything. if I could, Down here on this earth, if we could invite Jesus to a prayer meeting, I promise you, I'd get off the pulpit, I'd get, I'd get off the, the platform in a hurry and I'd say, Jesus, you take over. But wouldn't you just love for Jesus to put his hands of blessing and anointing out there and to pray over you? They had to feel like in deficit. Man, I wish I could pray like that. Lord, teach us to pray. Well, he says, well, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But that's, you know, that's, that's a good prayer. And I've heard people, what, they'll recite that. And it takes them about 15 seconds to recite it. And they'll say, amen. It's a model. It's a tool that God gave us. So we come and we say, our father, my dad, my dad, my father, the one that I want to walk in your steps. I just want to spend time with you. You're my dad who loves me. I just struck out again, dad, but you're, you're cheering me on. My father that corrects me. My father that gives me help. 
My Father that watches over me. Oh, my Father, before this day, oh, before I awoke, you prayed over me. You poured out your love on me. Probably some things that I didn't even see when I was driving to church that you protected me for. I am grateful that I have a God who is in heaven. In the splendor of glory, you're still looking down and you're counting the hair on the head and seeing the thoughts of my heart. While the angels are singing your praise, holy, 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 you're joining in with me. All you know is the perfection of glory, but yet you're loving me with an everlasting love. Hallowed be your name. Glory be your name. Honor be your name. Jesus, the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. May my knee bow before you today. May every tongue confess. Lord, may my tongue confess you. May I boldly speak your name out. May I boldly share your name with others. You use it as a model. And it aids you and helps you as you pray. You pray scripture. You pray scripture. You memorize scripture. My daughter came to me last night. She said, Dad, I bought a shirt online. I'm like, okay. And she showed me this shirt. And it was John 3.16. But the way they had arranged the words on it, there was a, it was all in, a, it was a white shirt with black letters. But they had taken the, the letters and some of them wrote them up and down, Valentine, out of John 3.16. And I thought, amen, he's our valentine. Bless the Lord, amen? And I thought about that. But I can take John 3.16. How many of you know John 3.16? Make it yours. Lord's my shepherd. That means you're going to look after me today. You're going to watch after me today. I'm the sheep. I'm looking at you. And wherever you lead me, I'm going to follow. I said, the Lord is my shepherd. That's not John 3, 16, is it? I went to the 23rd Psalm real quick, didn't I? <laughs> Amen. For God so loved the world. For God so loved Brian. For God so loved me in, a, in an amazing way. That Jesus, you became. You're, own, my, you're, you're God's only begotten. But you loved me enough to leave heaven and come to me on, here on earth so that you could die on that cross of Calvary for me. That because I believed in you, I don't have to perish. But Lord, you've given me everlasting life, so I'm going to walk with you forever. You can never pray scripture and not pray the will of God. So let me ask you, when you're reading your Bible in the morning and a scripture comes out and jumps out at you, take it and make it a prayer. I always get nervous when I do this, so I'm going to do it again. <clears throat> and... I opened this up this morning. I opened it up to 2 Timothy chapter 2 in the first service. And I just opened it up again. And that evidently this is what God wants me. I just looked down at it. And I, I opened it up to Revelation. And I opened it up to Revelation chapter 4. And I, I, I'm looking here at this and I'm, I'm wanting to, to, to pray this scripture. So I'll do this. Immediately I was in the spirit. This was John. I know this because I've read this before. This is John the Apostle who's writing this. But I can say, Lord, I want to be in the Spirit. I want to be nothing between my heart and your heart. I want to be so close to you, O oh God, that whatever the Holy Spirit whispers, I'm hearing. I want to be so obedient to you that any instruction you give me, Holy Spirit, I want to pounce on it. I don't want to procrastinate it, but I want to immediately do it. And Lord, when he was in the spirit, behold, he saw your throne. But Lord, your scripture tells me that I can come boldly to the throne of grace today. So Lord, I have right here, though I'm physically on earth, my spirit can take me to the throne room in glory. And you are sitting high and lifted up on that throne in glory. Jesus, no other God in this earth is God. You are the only God. You are the one that every knee should bow before. And Lord, one day, I'm going to see you. That, that, that throne that John saw, I'm going to see. And all the witnesses that are around it, the Hebrews tells us about, the great cloud of witnesses that is encouraging on, 
because of the blood of Christ, I'm going to be able to stand in front of that throne and look at you in all your glory and all of your splendor. And there I see one sat on the throne, Jesus, not two gods, not ten gods, not me as God, but you are God. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a diamond and a sardis stone in appearance. Lord, I see the brightness of your glory. And the light that shines from you, there is nothing that can compare to you. Lord, through life, I see a lot of people who want to be admired, but I admire you more. There are a lot of people who say this is what is important, but Lord, you're on the throne and I want you to be more important. You see, you can take any scripture and you can take every scripture and let, you can let it become your scripture. I hope you hear my heart when I say this. You'll never be bored. And you start praying scripture. And you'll say, well, I'll pray for 10 minutes. If you're not careful, 30 minutes will go by and it'll seem like 30 seconds. Because you've stepped out of time and you've stepped into eternity. So I, I prompt you to follow a model like the Lord's Prayer or the Acts Prayer or the Pray Prayer or Pray Scripture. But I'm going to ask you to do something else. I, uh, I have... In front, up here, I'm going to put them down here for y'all. It's business cards, but there's nothing written on them. And I got our secretary, Laura White. She's a sweet, sweetheart. And I said, um, can you get me some business cards, blank ones? She said, sure. She said, how many? So I told her how many without thinking about it. So y'all know I was wrong. Amen. So we came back, she got more. And I said, I want you to put them in groups of 25. And this is what I want you to do. Right now, you're going to decide whether you're going to do this or not. I want you to get with God. I want you to listen to the Holy Spirit. And there's some things you need to pray about. There's some things that are on your heart. You may be embarrassed to talk to anybody else about it. I really would hope that you would share your prayer request with others. But write them down on the card. Matter of fact, some people may come to you and say, hey, would you pray for me? I've got this issue. Well, take the request and write it on the card. Now, this is what I want you to do. You can shuffle them up. You can mix them up however you want to. But I want you to take these with you. Ladies, how many of you carry a pocketbook? And some of y'all's pocketbooks, if you put these down in them, you'll lose them forever. <laughs> so put it in that little side place where you can pull them out real quick. Guys, we got front pockets. We put them in our back pocket over here. But what I want you to do, if you're driving down the road or if you're just thinking about it, if the Holy Spirit just says, pray, pull out your cards, shuffle them up, look at them, and whatever, pray for it until God says, okay. And then when you get through with praying that one, flip it over and try another one. By the way, this is not my idea. I stole this. I got it from Steve Gaines. He's the pastor of Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, where Adrian Rogers was pastor. Lynn and I got to spend about three days with him. He was there for about 30 people, uh, pastors and wives, and, and we got to spend about three days with him up at the Georgia Baptist Assembly in Tacoa. Become a, he's a great man of God. I, I almost said friend. We're more acquaintances than we are friends. I know who he is. I don't know if he remembers me or not. But just write them down and carry them with you. When you say you don't have anything to pray, pull out your cards. Now listen, pray blessings over your cards. Pray belief over your cards. That man in Mark 9 who brought his son he said, Lord, if there's anything you can do, would you have compassion on us and help us out? And Jesus said, if I can, all things are possible to him who believes. That man thought about it and said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Circle your cards and say, Lord, I believe. We have not because we ask not. We believe not. 
We trust not. And we do not. The only thing that can make you fail is not praying. That's the only thing. Just take God who can move any mountain, who can remove any obstacle. Let's start being praying people. Our time with God will determine the rest of our life. Our story hasn't been written yet, but it can be prayed about. What might not happen because we refuse to pray? But think about it this way. What will happen because we choose to pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for the time that we've been together. Lord, my prayer is that in this time, they haven't heard just from me, they've heard from you. That you have impressed upon their heart. Lord, that you have spoken plainly and clearly, lovingly, kindly. Father, we believe in prayer, but do we really believe if we don't pray? Lord, because we pray, because we believe, because we trust, we know that you'll come through because that's the kind of God you are. Father, would you take us from where we are? Help us to fall greater in love with you than we ever have. Daily praying, believing, trusting, and walking it out. Help us to fall in love with the process to love you more than we ever have before. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.